In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends of the Co-Cathedral, of our parish community, and others connected, I welcome you. We're inside the church, obviously. I'm standing with our liturgical musician, Sebastian Motorelli. And we're standing particularly in front of the organ today because there was a couple that watches our live stream masses from Denver. And they sent me an email saying, okay, we love your church and we love the organ, but we don't know anything about it. And we're watching the videos every week. So why don't you tell us something about the organ? That was a great question and request. So in the renovation of our church in 2000, we did not have the money in the midst of all that was going on to create this space that was architecturally designed. There was a, a whole kind of space up there that was left for an organ, but we didn't have the money. And Bob Hockmeister, who was our liturgical musician at the time, was visiting with one of our parishioners who had an interest in uh, offering a gift anonymously in honor of her parents, and in particular her mother, Dorothy, that was a, an organist. So on this feast day of St. Monica, it's beautiful. Here's another awareness about a mother who played the organ, and they offered this gift. It was created in the Czech Republic. It's a Rieger Kloss organ. And uh, I remember that summer, which is over 20 years ago now, when uh, these young gentlemen came and they lived here for three months to come and tune these thousands of pipes to connect with the old organ that was put in uh, our church at the time of its building in 1956. So now we're gonna check in with uh, Sebastian who plays this because you can have a beautiful uh, instrument like this but if you don't have someone who knows how to play it, it's not gonna work. And we have an excellent organist, liturgical musician, pianist, and we're very, very grateful for that. So Sebastian, what's it like to play this machine? Uh, it's a very beautiful uh, thing, also fun, I need to say, because uh, of all the buttons it has and sounds, you can create uh, many combinations of sounds, uh, many ways in which you can really sustain uh, the singing. You can, uh, it's very beautiful when you need to start something to lift up the hearts of the community. And so you have a uh, trumpet sounds. Some of them, you can see them. They are uh, horizontal, but they are way many more than those. Uh, then you have uh, some more meditative music that you can play um, Yeah, sustaining the singing again, or just solos we have oboe sounds, flute sounds, some other effects uh, that resemble string sounds. And so you create the climate according to the liturgy. And it's very great for me to also to have the chance of practicing great music, to accompanying uh, and to improvising because that's an important part for the liturgy. So the, over, the music doesn't, how do you say, it doesn't overpower the liturgy, doesn't stop the liturgy, but can accompany and fit in. So tell us, uh, you know, I know when we installed the Rieger class, they were very aware that we wanted to keep uh, the old organ pipes, even though the council, of course, would be gone. So what about this antiphonal, uh, really, treat, if you will, because I love it when you push the right buttons mm. and we have the pipes in the back creating sound along with the front. What about that antiphonal aspect? So um, as far as you said, when when I came here, the organ was finished already. Uh, Bohak Meister did that. So I was very surprised with what I could hear. Uh, that the, what, what you are saying is the old organ, let's say, the, from the Wicks Company from Illinois. And then this one was the River Clause from Czech Republic. Um, I always ask people, it's fun to ask, uh, like, how many pipes you think it has, because they start counting and they tell you some number, but actually it's over 13, uh, 3,800 pipes. Uh, a little more than 2,600 are here, and the rest are on the other organ. So it is, it works as an antiphonal, but also as a supplement. Antiphonal means you can have a dialogue from one organ with the other, and they also complement very well. In order to 
make both organs complement in one, you need to do a process that is called voicing, basically, and that is what uh, this company that brought this organ did. So both pipes would complement and sound together. Thank you. So if you can just imagine what happens in our liturgical life. Those of you so familiar know the precious gift of music, but in particular this organ and this uh, beautiful piano. And maybe you should say something about the piano because I'm going to get a request next week to say, <laughs> well, what about the piano? Why did you leave that out? Yeah, well, the piano, um, so we moved the other piano that we had here that I think was donated by Vicky Clavier, that's right, or I can't remember now. But um, that piano went to the chapel, and so we needed a new piano here. Uh, this was shortly after I arrived. I mean, uh, you, you, I, I was with you, I think we even went to a, a place to look for a piano, and then we tried different kinds, and then I happened to be in, in New York, in Manhattan, and I went to, to the Bossendorfer uh, cellar in that time. Uh, these are handmade pianos in Vienna, Austria, and so I tried uh, a few of them, and this was really the perfect sound for what we wanted for the liturgy and the perfect size because it fits very well the choir area. So that's how we got it. It came right from there. So we have these beautiful instruments and what's clear in the liturgical life of the church is uh, Sebastian, who's from Buenos Aires, is able to do all of this uh, graced time to create beautiful instruments. But then we have cantors and we have choirs and we have all the people that work with him as volunteers to really sustain uh, what is possible on the instruments. So can you say a little something about all of those volunteers and cantors and choir and people who build up the beauty of our liturgical life with music? Yeah, the first thing I say is that I miss them very much because of the pandemic, so we we, we still are in touch, but we only have one cantor at a time now. Uh, they give uh, lots of their talent, so to play an instrument, to sing like they sing, that doesn't happen overnight. So they have worked hard to get where they are, and they offer the talent for the beautiful of us, uh, the, of the liturgy for all of us. It is something uh, that is very moving to see. It requires a lot of time, every time you hear something here at Mass, uh, it hasn't happened in half an hour. I mean, maybe we meet for half an hour, but there is a lot of work that has been going on before that. So we have beautiful instruments, and that helps uh, to have also to, to, to attract, I don't know what word to use, to invite, to encourage other mm -hmm. people to join us. So Sebastian uh, speaks about the work that is involved with all of these volunteers and other instrumentalists too, violinists and all kinds of trumpeteers and people who come to help. So it's so significant to recognize the work behind these front pipes and the work of the wicks organ in the back. In other words, it's uh, not just something superficial, but there's a lot going on out here, uh, beyond here with wind and with all that creates this incredible beauty and uh, signs of new life for us. So uh, what I am so aware of uh, during this time of the pandemic, as Sebastian already mentioned, and by the way, I think I said earlier, he's from Buenos Aires, which is an interesting story in itself of how he ends up here in Rochester, Minnesota. We're grateful that he did and uh, what he can accomplish and do. So in the history of the church, you know, there has been such powerful signs of gifts given for music and for composition. And Sebastian studied composition uh, in Italy. So can you tell us a little bit about composition? Yes, so um, I studied, so first I studied in Argentina for many years. Uh, and then when I got the scholarship from the government in Italy, I went to Italy to, to do three years there too. Uh, it's something that I like to do since I was a kid. I mean, I remember going in the city bus. I used the city bus to go to the school when I was eight years, eight years old. And that's when I remember the first tune that came to my mind, that it was my own tune. 
And so since then I always realized that uh, I love to do that. So in the orchestra, in the little orchestra in the school, I was the soloist, and then we had the band at 12, and then little by little I started writing. Uh, it is a wonderful uh, gift to have because not only for what you do, because, because you understand what goes on in other people who do. And also it helps a lot when you need to improvise, when you need to play something, uh, for instance, for the liturgy, uh, you know how to make it work to get the sound that is needed in that moment. So it is, I mean, I could talk for an hour about that, sorry. <laughs> so who's your favorite composer? Depends on the day. Uh, last week it was Beethoven, because that was what I was listening to. Uh, before it was Prokofiev. Um, I love Bach, of course, Mozart. Oh my, it's impossible. Rachmaninoff. Yeah. yeah. It depends what I'm listening to every week. <laughs> so you see, he loves to compose, but <clears throat> he doesn't have time because he needs to do the work for the Co Cathedral. <laughs> so now I, I could ask for donations to help him so he has more time to compose, but then he wouldn't do the work here. So cancel that possibility of offering <laughs> donations. Even though we try to cut out a little time for him, he did the remarkable piece for us when we celebrated our 150th anniversary. And we'll just close with that experience of creating that beautiful piece. Yes. Um, so this happened, I think 2012 already was, uh, the anniversary was the 150th, 2013. And we had talked uh, about what we would do to celebrate and we had talked about the mass with the bishop and all that and some other thing. And then uh, I always had the desire, Rachmaninoff, that's one of the composer, uh, he, he has a beautiful sacred work uh, for choral music. It's called the All Night Vigil in English. And uh, I had a desire always to write something like that, and it came to my mind, what a more beautiful homage that writing with the text from St. John the Evangelist, our patron. And so then I went on vacation that summer for a week, and I received a call from you, who have found a hermit, and you sent me there, I mean, for six weeks to write the whole thing, and it was great. Beautiful. So <clears throat> surprises happen. We're, we're looking for some more surprises. And I'm waiting for Sebastian to create another video with the choir to surprise us like he did with O Healing River. So thank you, Sebastian. You know, I'm so mindful. We offer a prayer for the family that donated the organ and in honor of Dorothy on this feast of St. Monica. She really begged and prayed for her son, Augustine, like mothers do. So mindful of all mothers, because Monica is the patroness of motherhood, we pray and ask the mother of Jesus to intercede with us and bless this family with their precious gift. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue to enjoy lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, but also <clears throat> we need more people when we return to the church after pandemic in a full way to join the choir, <clears throat> to be a cantor, to be an instrumentalist. Don't be afraid. We need you and you need to volunteer. God's peace.